All right, great. Hello, I am Andrew. I am the process coordinator and outreach person for the, uh, the Critical Zone Collaborative Network's Big Data Cluster. It's my joy to do that work. And I am once again joined by, please introduce yourself. Hello, uh, my name is Bryn Stewart. I'm a PhD student at Penn State studying environmental engineering. So PhD student means so many things, like you had to go through a bachelor's degree and then a master's degree. And how is it being a doctoral student? Um, it's good. I mean, I actually didn't do a, a master's degree. I did oh. a direct to PhD program at Penn State, but yeah. It's like, um, is, it like, is that like skipping a grade? They were like, oh my gosh, you're so brilliant that you don't even have to waste your time doing that. Come on over here into our program. Nah, no, it's more, more just a different option, I suppose. <laughs> um, I find your work fascinating. And so thank you so much for taking some time to talk about it and preparing for the American Geophysical Union annual fall meeting, which is, it's underway. I mean, there's a workshop going on this afternoon talking about, there's a, there's a I think it's a, a critical zone town hall happening tonight. So it, the AGU meeting is already happening. We're gonna be there in person next week. And we've been talking about some tips for first time attendees. We've talked about what to wear, how to practice, how to present, questions to ask. So I've got these, just a few questions to ask you today. The first ones are the top three, one, two, and three. Have, you can do three first, one first, two first, or everyone. Networking tips that you have uh, developed in yourself over the years. Uh, what is the number, what is one of the top three networking tips that you can think of? Mm, yeah, I wouldn't, I would not consider myself to be an expert in networking by any means, but um, I think one, and this might not be in any particular order. Please, but, yes, no. Um, one thing is maybe to just be yourself, be honest about like, who you are and like what you're interested in you know if um that kind of makes your conversations more uh genuine and concrete and it'll lead to you know better things later on um and then also i think leaning into your existing network so for example your phd advisor could in, uh, introduce you to many many people because they've been in the game much longer than you so that's always really helpful um but yeah. yeah, I'm going to follow up on that one because that's an interesting thing to think about, especially AG, where there's so many people there from all levels of their career. You see someone, you know, your advisor knows them. How do you get over that thing? Like, can you introduce me to that person? Mm -hmm. Yeah, is I mean, th that's just a perfect way to do it, I think, is most PhD advisors would be very happy to, you know, introduce you to people that they know and, you know, they want to make those connections and get you, get your name out there really. So. So they'd be like, yeah, sure. Great. Here's your letter of introduction. You can go give it to them. <laughs> That's been my experience at least. Yeah. What has been, what was the hardest part of networking for, is it just talking? What about ending the networking conversation? Hmm. Um, yeah. I mean, for me, I'm not, a terribly outgoing person I'm not super talkative so that's always a bit of a barrier but yeah for for ending I think it's just you know making a making plans to maybe communicate via email later or have a a separate meeting where you can talk longer about a you know potential collaboration I think that's a good way to end something if they have other other things to do other people to meet should you practice that during the trip like okay uh, I've got to go I've got another session coming up in five minutes like I'm just gonna rehearse that to prepare like get that, yourself that's a good that's a very good way to do it too i think yeah prepare some stock phrases <laughs> um, one of the things um that you mentioned i wanted to ask about is um should you have a business card should you have a qr code with your website should you have just your just an email that's written down how do you exchange that information what's a good way to do that yeah that's a, a really good point i i've never had a business card in my life but um i know in poster sessions, a lot of people will have kind of little handouts, either maybe of key figures um, and then with their contact information on it. Um, during the oral presentation, you can project any contact information on your slides. So that's a good way to do it as well. Um, but yeah, I guess having having some way to communicate your the best way to contact you if you want to um, communicate with someone later on uh, is a good way to keep that connection. 
So in the moment you're like, oh, I think I have a piece of paper around here somewhere. You'd be like, oh, here's my QR code. Just scan it on my poster. You'll get my, yeah, that works. My code. Definitely. What about evening events? The day is all set. You've got your schedule, but there are things that happen, like there are vendors who have their own events or there's gatherings of particular fields of study. Are there any recommendations that you have for how to pick and choose which evening events to go to? Hmm. Um, I generally try to try to keep myself pretty flexible in, in that kind of thing. Like, for example, um, if I'm like our lab group, we'll typically have, you know, maybe one night where we're set to get dinner together and everything like that but for the rest of the week um I generally just try to like keep things open and then if if something seems really interesting or if um, I meet someone and and want to you know go and talk to them more um I'd keep an evening open for that but yeah just be flexible and and go wherever you're interested in I think I'd love to talk to you more my Thursday is the night that I'm meeting some people so if you want to do that let's we'll figure out a way to get that what about the pressure like you said you have your lab group do you have to go to that? Like, is it as much as a class or a regular lab meeting? Or if you're like just exhausted, you'd be like, you know what? This is more of a casual thing. I can skip this one. The pressure of having to do those things. Oh yeah, I think it's it's totally up to you in, in any situation. Cause we talked about this before about, you know, being at the end of your social capacity. I mean, that's I think more important than, um, you know just putting your face out there for a, a drink or whatever, but yeah. People will be understanding is what I is. Exactly. Yeah. Oh my God, I get it. Yes, please go recharge. I'll see you tomorrow morning. If you don't have a session to present that day, do you go first thing in the morning? Do you take that extra time to sleep in? How do you do time management during such a busy, exciting time? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that I think requires some, some strategizing beforehand. Um, whether you have like certain sessions that you're really interested in going to, I think just having them on your schedule um, before you go is is really helpful. And then planning maybe your attendance around that. So if maybe you have a, a schedule or a, a session you want to attend that's in the afternoon and you want a little free time in the morning to do whatever it is that you want to do, relax, you know, maybe go find a fun uh, cafe or something, then, you know, you have to enjoy where you are as well. So that's a fascinating point. The idea that we're going to be in uh, Chicago, huge metropolis area, lots of things to do. So find some time to do some things that's not AGU related, might help recharge your batteries. Mm -hmm. What about the, the feeling, the fear of missing out? Oh my God, I'm not going to the right thing. How do you confront that in yourself, give yourself a little bit of grace to not feel like you have to go to everything. How do you decide? Yeah, I think, yeah, it's important to just recognize that it's not possible to, to go to every single thing. And, you know, because everything is so interesting, you want to, but um, yeah, there's, there's always kind of um, that fear, but um, I guess keeping in mind that things as well are typically uh, recorded virtually and, and some of that material is still available for, after the actual the week-long event um you know you can always look at that afterwards if you wind up missing it but yeah just you know keeping in mind that you're only one person you can only be in one place at one time so there's a big feeling of community at AGU everybody is there to do the same thing talk about things they love they're passionate about that fascinates them does this go beyond regular social awkwardness? Can you go and talk to someone that you usually would never talk to? Hmm. I suppose if you have that kind of um, common interest, it's it's easier to, to start a conversation with someone. Um, you know, there's social, social awkwardness is always kind of a thing, but um, I think yeah, just having that, knowing that other people are interested in the same thing that you are can and be a really easy or a, a really helpful way to get over that initial barrier. There's lots of like strange cultural things at AG, like people bring silly ribbons to attach to their name badges and, and things like that. Like there's a learning curve for going there. What would you say for someone who's going for the first time? Should they worry about learning a new culture? Should they just be open to it? What sort of things for, for learning the culture of an AGU fall meeting? Um, I think, yeah, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> whatever's the, um, 
there are things that I suppose are, are more important than others. Like the, the ribbon is just kind of a, a silly little thing, but um, I don't know, just, just learning about how to meet people and interact and um, learn about other people's work is probably the primary goal of AGU. Not to get into the, the, don't worry about, oh my God, I'm not fitting in. I don't have the right silly ribbon. I'm not, <laughs> like, I don't know what they're talking about over there. I don't need to worry about that. I've got, I'm here for a purpose. Yeah, so exactly. You focus on your purpose. The last thing, we've got so much to do to get ready. We're traveling this weekend. Safe travels to you, of course. You too. Um, I, one last question is, what should you be doing this weekend to prepare? Is there too much time? Can you practice too much? Can you overpack? <laughs> Can you over prepare? Oh, I don't know. I don't know if I've ever been in that situation, <laughs> but I, cause I will, I will practice until the last minute um, just cause it helps myself mentally. But yeah, I mean, the kind of weekend before is when I do a lot of schedule planning, some, you know, the last presentation practices, all of that. I think whatever, whatever you need to do to, to make yourself feel ready is, is the most important thing to focus on before you leave. You have Monday's a big day. Mm -hmm. for you a big big day you're presenting you're doing all of that stuff uh are you going to sleep on sunday night that's that's the goal <laughs> that's important that's so important sleep yeah thank you Bryn. thank you so much for this is the fourth time we've done this when we first did it we didn't even know things hadn't been accepted yet the schedule hadn't been out there and now here we are just a few days away thank you so much for going on this road to agu 22 with me i really appreciate it i will see you in chicago yep thanks i'm excited to see you there